Hello, today I have a really special guest. He's a businessman, but more than a businessman, he's a successful man of God. And I think you're going to really enjoy this presentation. I'll be right back. I'm so glad you came back. I'm, I am so excited about our interview today. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Jackie Cecil with JackieStrategist.com. And today our guest is Sean Ryan. Sean is a powerful man of God. And he has this wonderful, big, strong body. And the cool thing about him is his spirit man is even larger than that body he has in real life. So let me see if I can get Sean in. Sean, are you here? Good morning. How are you, Jackie? <laughs> Happy to see you. We made it. We're going to get this done. We did. It's going to be good. <laughs> God's going to move powerfully. Yeah. So let me tell the audience this. Uh, for the last hour and a half, if there was a kind of issue I could have with every screen, every phone, every telephone, nothing was working. <laughs> So I call Sean, and Sean had a wonderful word of encouragement. Sean, would you tell the audience what you said to me? So I've always, what I've always told people, if we're doing something God's called us to do, and we're met with a battle, then we know we're on the right track. Because um, <laughs> the enemy's trying to throw delay, discouragement, and everything else. So we're to celebrate that. We should actually celebrate that, because we know we serve the Lord uh, that doesn't even lose a battle. So we know that... Uh, we're on the right track and victory is in our path and we should celebrate it. You know, we should, we should tell the enemy nice try, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> That's probably what kept me from crying. Sean, <laughs> little, uh, Sean gave me this little, um, we were on the phone. I'm like, <laughs> and, and he was very encouraging. So this, I believe the anointing is so strong on this video. So I'm so glad you came in to hear Sean. Sean, First, why don't you give us a little bit about yourself and, you know, everything you want to tell us about family or your jobs. Just, just you know, give us a few minutes of who you are. Okay, we'll try that again. <laughs> Sean, I'd like for you to just tell the, the audience uh, a little bit about who you are. So I'm a, I'm a local business owner. It's been in uh, uh, the family since 1944. Um, so my great grandpa started it. We're in tire store mechanic shop. Um, and so it's been passed down. I'll be actually the generation. Um, so, and I really believe um, God's using uh, right now, our time he's breaking, there's been generational curses being brought down um, through that of, you know, things that, the just bickering and stuff. So really, I believe who I am in Christ right now is yes, I show up to a tire store. Um, but more than uh, more than anything, when people enter that tire store, um, chains are broken, that they have to come into alignment with what God's called them to that the Holy Spirit reigns there. It's not my tire store. When I got saved four or five years ago, one of the first thing that uh, God taught me is I have nothing. Um, it is all his. The only way I can fail is if I take possession of it. So the tire store is not mine. It's God's. Um, and I just get to be a steward of it. And uh, I have a wonderful wife that prayed me to get me to where I'm at. <laughs> and by the grace of God, she didn't leave me. Um, oh. and <laughs> <laughs> and I have uh, 13 years old. I have a daughter that's nine and I have a four year old. Uh, and there, my son is prophetic. His prophetic gift is going to be huge. Um, I love seeing him. He has that black and white, you know, so right now it's just kind of guiding him through that. Um, our middle one's a dreamer. She has uh, prophetic dreams that would just blow your mind. Um, and then our youngest at four years old, she's a prayer warrior. You have a headache and she's the first one lay hands on you. She's going to heal and Jesus is going to heal you. <laughs> Um, you know, so I, I'm just really excited since just committing to Jesus, 
um, I'm just really excited to where he's taken us, uh, you know, and that's one thing he pounds in me is he cannot fail. Uh, you know, no matter what we're doing, no matter what we've called, we have a job, you know, that we make our, our living, but that's not our calling. Our calling is to, uh, wherever we're at, take that territory for Jesus. Um, and so we just try concentrating on a family to do that. Excellent. That. That's excellent. Excellent. Um, now that you're um, on, a, on a, a deeper path, uh, <laughs> I, I, this is what I, like, I say uh, to a lot of people who are sincerely seeking the Lord's face. Now that you are making tracks in the spirit realm, um, that causes Satan to be notice you more because the majority of us walk without... Um, a deep spiritual walk. So then we leave no track in the spirit realm. But since, right. your, since your tracks are there, you might know that he's tracking you. <laughs> but right. somehow I'm thinking that doesn't, um, that doesn't slow you down, does it? As you know, uh, when we see that, we should celebrate it. And that's one thing. At the beginning of the year, he had, uh, God had told me, um, I was going to be a man of big faith. Um, and in that, you know, people were going to call on the things that seem impossible. They were going to call for me to stand beside them in what seemed impossible. So guess where the first thing, you know, the enemy tries to attack you is, you know, faith. Did God really say that? Did God really do that? Um, but God being who he is, Last year, the middle of last year, he had me come up with a dream wall. And he would have me just these crazy dreams that I had of just the desires of my heart, because our desires of our heart become the desires of his heart when we're serving him. So I would write these crazy things that seemed impossible out on this wall. Um, then a month or so later, he said, hey, I want you to write out on the other side. you know, where I'm true, where I have answered. And it's just blown my mind. It's in our garage. So we see it every time we walk in. Oh. And he had me do that because he knew that where the enemy was going to try to attack me is, did God really say that? So I have 15, 20 dreams that seemed impossible that he fulfilled like that. Um, All right. Give me two of those. So two of them. Um, so one of them would have been, uh, he told us he was going to give us a house on the hill, right? Um, we have a beautiful home. We have, we weren't really, we didn't really know what that looked like. So there's some property in Roswell um, that faces the Cap 10 mountain, right? Um, and so we thought, that's it. He's, he's going to give us a mountain. A couple months later, we're in Redoso, the mountain. We find this home that is gorgeous. We pray about it way outside our price range. We just prayed about it and said, God, if you want us to have this, you know, we're going to lowball this. this is the only way it can work. They took it and it faces the very mountain that it faces in Roswell. It's just right in front of us. <laughs> um, so we wake up in the mornings when we're there and look out our bedroom window and it is that exact mountain mountain that we can sense but it's in our backyard um another one has been uh he healed my shoulder i had about 11 pins or something in my shoulder um we went to a revival thing a really small revival thing there was nothing fancy um anything like that and he just said hey so I'm here with the bad right shoulder god's healing it my shoulder was on fire i haven't been able to throw a baseball since i was 15 years old uh now i get out there play catch with my kids. Uh, oh. God, and that's something, you know, when he tells me, when you've had three shoulder surgeries and you've had doctors telling you, you're not going to be healed. You're going to throw like a girl the rest of your life. You can't do this. You can't do that. God's showing me, hey, quit listening to what man says. It matters what I say. And I say you're healed. Uh, and I can throw a baseball better than I've ever been able to throw a baseball. I can go out there with my kids. I can do everything. And it's all god you know it helps us you know uh and that's what blows my mind is the things he does 
the world has sold a lot of uh, God doesn't care what you want. But when we're serving the Lord, our father is the almighty God. We are we're not beggars. We're inheritors. Um, and so, you know, we go into we have access to everything. It, heaven, yes, is the promise of eternity. And here we have some battles, but we have access to heaven here. We can access the kingdom of our father all day, every day. The enemy tries throwing little things at us to keep us out of kingdom living. Um, but the impossible is where my father reigns. And that's where he's calling us to reign is bring heaven down. We have access here. Um, and if we can just stay in that, uh, we're unstoppable. And Hey, I have to remind myself a hundred times a day, sometimes 200 times a day of who I am in my father's eyes. Cause it doesn't matter what the world says. Um, in that's, fact, that's I'm right. the opposite of what the world says. Uh, you know, um, of many. But one day I'll take you out there and I'll, I'll, I'll screenshot after and I'll send you uh, pictures of our dream wall because there's many on there. But Oh, that'd be awesome. Okay, so the next question I want to ask you. Um, you let's say you have a male friend who is on the uh, teetering around, not, not really able to step inside the spirit realm in, in, on the side of Jesus. What, what would you say to him? What would you say to that man who needs uh, an encouragement to step into the life with Jesus? You know, so it's funny you said that we celebrated uh, Hanukkah and, and Passover. We do those and over Passover, there's been a man that's in my life that he's a Christian, he's a believer, but he has that really religious view. It has to make mm -hmm. sense. Um, you know, and he was in the kitchen. In fact, we missed the whole Passover. Everyone else was in there doing Passover. Me and this man stayed in the kitchen just talking about it. And he asked me the same thing. He says, well, well, you know, I believing some of that stuff. And I said, well, I said, the very home you're sitting in is proof. The very marriage you're looking at when I walk and hug my life, my wife is proof because four years ago, my business was bankrupt when I wasn't serving Jesus. And overnight he restored that, you know, four years ago, my marriage was over, but four years ago, the Lord restored that to better than what it's ever been, not to where it was, but to better. So to not like I told him, I said, if you are saying you don't believe in that spiritual realm or that's just, you know, people making things up. I said, the very house you're in is proof because I can show you proof of when the bank called and I was short tons of money that there was no way I had access to that they were going to call the notes to. I can show you proof of that and I can show you 24 hours later <laughs> that God showed up. I I can show you proof, but here we are and we're strong and we're fighting demons and we are taking territory for the kingdom of God all day, every day. Um, you know, so I think as Christians, God didn't do those things for me to keep them to myself. He did those things for right. me to get on the mountaintops and shout the goodness of my father. He, he called me to, if I keep that to myself and I don't go, and I'm not proud of my past. The past is ugly. But what I am proud of is that no matter how bad it is and how ugly it is, our father's calling us to his kingdom. He, all we have to do is answer. And all we have to do is say, use me, God, and repent. You know, that's the one thing I think a lot of us, um, we ask for forgiveness, but do we repent, you know? And if we repent and turn from our ways and call upon the Lord, it's on. You know, he just will. Only, only one that can limit us then is us. And, you know, so I just really, anytime I'm around someone that's struggling, I just lay it out there. The good, the bad, the ugly. And if they want to deny, they can deny. But if they deny at that point, it's because they want to deny. Uh, yeah. Because there's proof, uh, you know. Um, so I just think as fellow believers that are taking territory in that spiritual realm, were to find the ones that aren't um, and pull them along. Cause we all need to be pulled along. Sometimes I still get in slumps, you know, and clay pulls me like crazy. That guy challenges me and he challenges me in times when I don't want to be challenged, you know, but <laughs> I love it. We need those people. Um, 
you know, just like Moses when in the battle, you know, they had to hold his arms up. They set him upon the rock of the Lord and he was weary and he had fellow battlers holding his arms up. And that's what we're to be is uh, fellow Christians. The first time we spoke on the phone, you told me you heard God's voice. Will you tell us a few sentences about that, that event in your life? Right. So uh, at that time, um, I would would have called myself. I knew who God was. Um, I was going to serve myself and not serve the Lord so that he didn't call me to anything crazy. It sounds dumb now that I say it out loud years <laughs> later. It's like, what are you thinking? But if you taste the goodness of the Lord, I promise you, you won't ever look back <laughs> at your past. What we used to think good is garbage. And when you start tasting the goodness of our father there's you will never go back um but i was uh i just felt this tug i knew he was calling me i knew the lord i wasn't sleeping good i wasn't i was just involved in tons of garbage and i had come home after work one day and i was just talking to god and i was walking towards my bedroom and i heard him he said i heard his audible voice and he said you choose and you choose now i mean i just broke down um uh, and I was just bawling. I was sobbing. And, and my two things, I didn't care about my business. I didn't care about any of that. I just said, God, give me you and my family. Um, and from that moment, at another time, I think uh, I get off into an hour or two hour, but <laughs> my marriage, but the example he used, I'm broken and my wife is sitting there and I'm just bawling. And I saw Jesus in her and she embraces me. And when she embraced me, and I was just broken. I felt the father. I had heard the father. Now I had felt the father. Um, and just wow. in that, and I was just, I mean, I was just sobbing. And from that day forward, I just knew, I knew God was real before then, but I had heard him and I had felt him <laughs> in a matter of minutes. And then with, uh, you know, so uh, it was the best day of my life at the worst feeling of my life, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, at, at my worst, when I felt more shame than I ever had in my life, I saw the love of the father right then and there. And he didn't say change and come to me. He said, choose. And I chose and he met me right there and he started changing me. You know, it wasn't overnight. I think back how I thought the first day I was a Christian. I don't think anything like that now, you know, because it's from glory to glory. But right. when we choose, a lot of times we think, think, oh, I'll go do that. Or when I change, a lot of times God calls us when we're not qualified, you know, because then it's all glory to him. You know, if I'm qualified, I'm doing it in the flesh. But if I'm unqualified and he calls me, it's all him. Amen. Amen. Okay. Since you've had such a good relationship with your wife showing God, tell me what you, what advice would you give a woman who is married to a man who isn't serving the father God? You know, I would give advice. It was probably 11, 12 years of my wife on her knees and on her face, um, just praying for me. And I would just say, don't give up, you know, um, don't give up. Those prayers are being heard and God says his, his word will not return void. And that's our prayers also. So when we pray and we're earnestly praying, but uh, thank God I had a praying life. I mean, I remember times changing the sheets and there was scripture under the bed on my side. I mean, I would <laughs> say just, you keep pumping those scriptures over your uh, significant other, your, your husband, you just pray over them when they're sleeping. I remember waking up some nights and she was praying in tongues over me. Um, I mean, she was battling for me and thank God, uh, you know, eternity, she will be thanked in for eternity because you know, if she didn't do those things, we're required, you know, as followers to pray for the unsaved, to lay hands on them, to battle for them, you know, and if we don't, and they don't make it to eternity, that's on us, you know, yes. um, I, I, I'll pass sometimes people and God says, go pray on them. And I'm like, 
ah, I'm busy, have to make up and go look like a dummy or something running around looking for him. And if I would just done it the first time, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I would just say my, my advice would be don't give up. It's coming. The breakthrough's coming. One thing that I know for sure um, is when God tells us on over that so on, you know, there's some family members that God's been having me praying for and battling for. And it's not if it comes, it's when it comes. Because when God tells us it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Just sometimes his timeline looks a little different than ours, but it's going to happen. And Amen. we just celebrate that. Amen. Okay. I ask you five questions. Now you're allowed to ask me. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll start over. Now, can you hear me this round? This round, I can hear you. Okay, I've asked you five questions. Now you can ask me one. Pretty fair, huh? <laughs> that sounds fair to me. <laughs> Mine would be more of not so much of a question, but a challenge. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I think, uh, and I think this is where God's wanting us to uh fund you to write down somewhere where you can see it all day every day on a wall or on a paper or in your journal somewhere where you see it and it's not hidden from um and i would just challenge you and the listeners as well write out your dreams where you see yourself spiritually next month five years from now ten years from now um I really like putting our timeline on it because God always blows that away. What we want to see done in a year, he does in a second. What we want to see in 10 years, he does in a month. Ah. Uh, you know, and I would, uh, I would just challenge you to write those out. And then as those miracles come and dream big, dream big. I want a dream. I'll show you my wall. I'll send you pictures. I mean, some of them are just astronomical and he fulfills them. Because he's good. And, and I think that's where he's calling us right now more than ever as believers. He's wanting us to know that he is the good father and that miracles are always happening around us. And he's just calling us to acknowledge those and shout them from the mountaintop. So my challenge would be write those down and then somewhere right next to it, write down the miracle when it happens. It, it's a deal. I, I yeah. saw a place in my on my wall above my above this this screen where we are i'm just gonna put it up there <laughs> amen it's awesome you know okay, okay. Uh, so now we <laughs> i really do appreciate you letting me letting a stranger just call you and say would you please <laughs> do an interview for me but i don't want my channel to just be my voice because there are amen. thousands of wonderful christians that would that have your voice, that have that kind of spiritual things happening in their life. Um, Sean, this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to end our interview, but I'd like to interview it. I'd like to end the interview in prayer, but this time I'd like you to pray over me and the channel. Sean, this time, I would like to end this interview in prayer, but I would like you to pray over me. Amen. All right. It's a deal. <laughs> Lord God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus. I just thank you for Jackie, Lord. I just thank you for what you're calling upon her life, Lord, that, that your word does not return void, Lord. Lord, I, you showed me a vision of her rising from just a few viewers, Lord, to hundreds of thousands of viewers, Lord, because she is after your heart, Lord. I just thank you for uh, releasing your heart over her life. I just thank you for her for seeking your heart, Lord, that, that you're going to do mighty things, Lord. You've been saying the last year or two, Lord, that you're taking, uh, you're taking the first and making them last and taking the last and making them first, Lord. And she is in that order, Lord. She is going to go from, from being at the bottom of viewers to the United States. This is going to reach worldwide, that this is going to have no limits, Lord, because you are a limitless God, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. We just pray that the Holy Spirit flows through her channel, Lord, that every ear that hears, Lord, that people are going to stumble upon it by accident, Lord, but at that day, they will be able to mark that their life changed that day, that second, Lord, that you met them in their laundry, you met them in their car, you met them in their office, Lord Jesus, and we just thank you, Lord, that she is being obedient, Lord, that, that eternal 
eternal souls will rest with you, Lord Jesus, because of her obedience, Lord God. We just, I just, I can feel the Holy Spirit, Lord, is just so strong through this channel, Lord. I just thank you. I think that this is going to be one of the bigger ministries that I've ever gotten to uh, see, witness, Lord, from, from the start, Lord, to where you're taking her, Lord. Not because of, of her talent, Lord, but because you are the limitless Father, Lord Jesus. I just thank you, Lord God. I, I speak blessings over her life. I just pray, Lord, that you meet her, that today you are going to meet her at every step. It's going to be an ordained meeting, Lord Jesus, that you are just going to shower her. You're going to shower every, her and every viewer that views this. You're going to shower them with your goodness today, Lord, that today they will almost feel bad because they are spoiled so much by you today, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to be good. I'm excited. <laughs> you have an anointing over you like I haven't seen in a long time, so it's going to be good. It's going to be awesome. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a little bit of... <laughs> no problem. This is obvious yeah. that uh, Satan uh, is not impressed with our prayer. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I, was, I really was about to have a pity party. And I called you and you, you said, get over it, girl. <laughs> you must be doing good. Satan wouldn't be doing this. And I was like, he's right. right. And, Amen. and somehow we're going to piece together this video and it's, but it touched the spirit realm. And that's the most important thing, Sean. It, Amen. Touched, me, it touched you. It touched us in the spirit realm. Amen. So it doesn't matter how much got cut out or cut in. The others don't hear. We, you and I heard this and I received that anointed prayer and I, I will do our very best to make sure I get all your good words in the edit and we don't have to <laughs> lose that video but frankly I just feel like I've been in the inside heaven's gates with your prayer and I thank you so much amen <laughs> awesome okay you have a blessed day and it was awesome so oh, I, I enjoyed it thank you so much all right, I'm going to close this program now. Goodbye. Thanks so much. We'll see you.